When was Genesis written? Very interesting question. I, uh, I had one commentary tell me it was written as the children of Israel were going to, uh, you know, going into the promised land. It was written along with Exodus and Numbers and Deuteronomy. And uh, other people have said it was written, it was actually in oral form and it was written down much, much later. Uh, you know, like, um, you know, sometime one is after Israel had been in the land for many years. And um, again, now I should now see now I should know a little bit more about that. But a lot of there's such difference of opinion about that. Now, why why are you asking? So I'm not totally sure. Yeah, the exile. Right, that's the one view. The one view is that it wasn't written down to so the children of Israel coming back from the exile of Babylon. It was very very late. I doubt that. But anyway, that's that's the. Uh, the, the, it's generally speaking, modern scholarship wants to believe. Honest to goodness, there's a vested interest. They want to believe that the, 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 the scripture books were written down many, many, many years after the event. I mean, it used to be German scholarship used to try to say the Gospels were written down 100, 150 years after Jesus died, and they have been absolutely. They have been modern scholars have been dragged kicking and screaming, you know with their fingernails, you know, holding on to the territory as it had been pulled away to the place where they now have to agree that all the Gospels were written within the lifetimes of the witnesses, that they were all written within 20, 30, 40 years, you know, after Jesus died. And the reason scholarship wants desperately to believe it happened much, 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 much later is they want to be able to say it's just a legendary. We don't have to take it seriously. So, I mean, it's got a, the, the, the reason I'm always a little... Uh, wary of the people who try to say it was real late, real late, real late. I know that their worldview needs to believe that. So I, you know, on the other hand, my worldview, you know, likes to believe that it was eyewitness accounts. So, yes, Kath? Just one comment as an English major. Uh, oral histories are extremely accurate in creating literary fiction. Uh, they are not just the oral history yeah. without yeah. moving a syllable. It's not That's right. That's right. If you're reciting, if you're reciting the book of Genesis, you know, which was, you know, was passed down for many years, and you don't get everything just right, you better watch out. You know, get whacked on the back of the head. Mm-hmm. Right. However, one thing, yes, but one thing that should be known is that. Everybody, even the most skeptical modern scholars, would say that Genesis 2 is a lot older than Genesis 1. Now, you know, what's interesting about that to me is I don't know that it's true at all. Um, it, but, but what they would say is Genesis 2, they look at the Hebrew of it, and it seems very, very, very old. And it's, it's, uh, it's, it's attributed to the, the J author, the Yahwist, they call him, uh, or her, whoever. And... Uh, uh, but that, see, that would fit in with what I was telling you anyway, and that is that, that the, you have original historic reporting, but at some point, God inspired someone to come along and say, here is, uh, you know, here's what it means. And I, I, you know, the really weird thing is, uh, here's one more thing about this literal thing, and then we're going to close up. Genesis 2, I was sorry, I'm not going to say this next year, week, so I better tell you now. In Genesis 2, it's very clear that God followed a natural order. There's a place where it says, um, that uh, that there was no vegetation yet because it hadn't rained yet. Okay, there's a place in Genesis two. There's a, I read a whole article from our, from our old Old Testament professor Meredith Klein years ago. Wrote an article called on Genesis two four where it says because it had not rained or maybe it's two six. And uh, Meredith Klein asked a question. He says if Genesis two says that you had to have rain before you had vegetation. But if you go back to Genesis one, you have vegetation before you have, you know, b- before you have uh, uh, the sun and the moon. Therefore, before you have weather, you have day three, which means you have vegetation. But day four, you don't have weather yet. It says now, if Genesis two says that God did things in a natural order, that He didn't do vegetation until there was rain, but but in Genesis one we have vegetation before there was rain, then you have you you actually have this. Uh, choice before you. You can either believe that Genesis 1 and 2 contradict each other and that we can't trust the Bible, right? That, that, that somebody wrote Genesis 2 and somebody wrote Genesis 1 and some idiotic editor just slapped them together. 
and they totally contradict each other, and that's the way the Bible is. It's just this compendium, right? Or you can believe that Genesis 2 is, is historical reportage and Genesis 1 is a poem. That's your only... T See, this is one of the reasons why I do not believe that Genesis 1 can be taken literally. Because if you take it literally, then you have a Bible that contradicts itself. Because the order in which God makes things in Genesis 2 contradicts Genesis 1. Now, critical scholars all along have always said, sure, it's because, you know, the Bible's just plucked together by different people. It's a bunch of different legends, and it's, you know, sort of like a kind of compendium of myths. But if you believe that the Bible's true, then you have to believe that there are two different literary genres. You have to. And that's one of the reasons I do not take every part of Genesis 1 literally is because it, if, if I do, it undermines the authority of the Bible. Okay? It's very important for you to hear that from me because I'm not going to say it next week. Maybe I will, you know, but I don't, I don't plan on it. I've already written some of next week's sermon. I don't plan on doing it because I really don't want to get dragged back into this because I think Genesis 1, 2, and 3 is telling us some wonderful things. But look, even look today, which is, I'm not complaining to you, but look, all of our conversation has been about creation and evolution. Not at all what Genesis 1 was written about. No, I'm not blaming you, because actually I, I gave you half the sermon on it, because I know that's just our context. You have to speak into your context. But uh, just keep all that in mind. So Genesis 2 is historical reporting, and it contradicts Genesis 1 unless Genesis 1 is a song. And I hope that you see some of that.